Gold took its largest single day drop in years on Tuesday. What happened? Here to talk about this and answer this question is Gary Wagner, editor of the goldforecast.com. Gary, it's good to see you during this week. And I only have two questions to start off this conversation. What on earth happened? And can we see another major pullback? Well, first of all, it's great to be back with the Kitco audience and share what we can to enlighten them on a market that is not only in a historical level, but is now experiencing extreme volatility. Extreme volatility. What kicked this off? Why are we seeing extreme volatility at the top? Is this just profit taking or is this the end of a bull rally? Personally, I do not believe it's the end of a bull rally. We, we have entered some sort of a correction. The question that I'm asking myself and the technical studies I'm looking at for the answers is whether or not this will be a shallow and short correction or an extended correction. Gary, have you ever seen a $100 drop in gold in your career? Offline, you're telling me that when you first started in this business, this wasn't even possible, correct? That is correct. Back in the uh, early 80s, when I began as a commodity broker and a CTA, they had limit moves on gold, platinum, and palladium. They could only move so much, kind of like the S&Ps do now with a circuit breaker, and they would stop trading uh, for the day. So to answer your question, have I seen this kind of move in a single day? It's been very rare if I've ever seen it at all. So were there any macro triggers that you could uh, attribute this to? That's what is most interesting. The run-up had a series of fundamental undertones that created this extreme bullish market sentiment for the precious metals. The dollar going lower, of course, was a great part of that. But that was due to a Federal Reserve accommodation and being very, very dovish. So... I think that the correction we're witnessing now could be very short-lived. It could be extended, but it is still unfolding. Um, as we speak today, uh, gold bounced back a little bit higher, but not by much. $20 um, as of uh, 4, 3.30 Eastern time. Now, Gary, tell us, uh, what are the charts showing you right now? Well, Obviously, as we broke through 2000, what first impressed me was the fact that unlike the time and middle of 2011, where gold pricing surged past 1900, but it was sustained for under a day. In other words, it just came back down and basically went to lower pricing. We saw prices hold above 2000 for quite some time. My sentiment is that it wasn't a macro event, but rather the market getting too crowded. I have good friends that know I've traded gold for 20 or 30 years, and they've never asked me how they go ahead and purchase gold. And I got many calls from those friends over the last couple of weeks. That tells me we've got the herd mentality moving into the market, and it's time to be careful. I think the reason for the sell-off yesterday was pure and simple profit taking. Okay. So just from a technical perspective, have we broken support? Is this the start of another uh, short term bear trend? Well, if you look at the technical indicators and the most important one that I follow is the 50 day moving average, the 200 day will show you a long term trend. We're far above that, but we never broke below the 50 day moving average. And what that tells me is that on a technical basis, uh, even yesterday's exaggerated move did not cause any extended major chart damage. Okay. Um, let's look at your uh, projections now because you, you, you've, based, um, you've based your projections on the Fibonacci sequence, if I'm not mistaken, and you're looking at a higher gold price level in the coming days, uh, trading days. Is that correct? That is correct. Basically, the model that we use is both Fibonacci retracement and Fibonacci extensions. And we use this off of rallies and corrections. So that, for example, when we look at the move from about $1,450 up to the record highs, that occurred starting in mid-March, but that was one extended rally. Now we're in some sort of a correction. So we're plotting where could that correction uh, subside at or conclude. 1943 is a 23% retracement, and 1848 
is the 38% retracement. The interesting thing is in action overseas, we saw the market drop to 1874, it's extremely exaggerated and pop back up to now where it's trading at 1942, this in a six hour period of time. So what I am seeing is even with a strong correction and a really, really massive price decline, there were buyers willing to buy the dip. And that is what will make this correction short-lived. You, you told me offline as well that you, uh, you had already uh, sold off some of your positions at above the $2,000 an ounce level. What, what triggered you to sell it off at that level? My sense was last week that we saw the market hit a relative high between 2080, 2090 on a couple of occasions. We didn't get that follow through because 2100 is the next level. And there's an old adage, if, if traders can't move a market higher, they're going to try to move it lower. And I think that's kind of the case when it ran out of steam at that price the, the, the buying pool kind of dries up, the sellers become prevalent, and the buyers pulling profits on their short-term trades become prevalent. To me, it was more a matter of trailing our stops up and not wanting to get caught in the trap that many got caught in back in middle of 2011, because I watched that market come down at much quicker than it went up once it broke 1900. A lot of people got hurt and I didn't want to see that mistake become repeated, this time being my fault. Are you buying at these levels, Gary? Yes, yes. Um, I really believe that there is a high probability that this current level at 23 will hold. If not, it doesn't have that much further to go, maybe 1943. So what I've been suggesting uh, to, to my clients and subscribers is that we initiate we initiate the ETFs SLV as well as GLD. I'm also telling them for my subscribers that like to accumulate and hold that they begin accumulating again. In fact, the article that I wrote yesterday was we we saw the market sell off dramatically. What a huge opportunity! And it's kind of a second chance for those that got in, pulled some profits, and are flat. It's a good reentry point. For those uh, individuals and investors who felt they missed the boat and then kind of got scared once it pa got past 2000 and felt they got priced out of it, they're getting a second chance. So I'm really excited about the potential because our current model indicates that we will see a correction, but that will be followed by a final rally taking gold to a new all-time price high. What's this new all-time price high? I, I got to ask you since you brought it up. Yeah, I've got two different models right now. One's looking at around 2250. The other one is sitting at around 2340. Okay. Uh, Gary, something interesting happened this week on Tuesday as gold dropped. Prices uh, for uh, equities dropped as well. We saw the major indices trace back before climbing back higher. We saw uh, a similar pattern um, in March, although of course, as you know, that the, uh, the, the V-shaped recovery in stocks took a lot longer than just a few hours. Uh, could, this, um, could you draw a parallel between what happened today and what happened in March? Were they the same drivers? Were they completely different? Well, you know, it's interesting. As we talked about before the show, typically yeah. there is an inverse correlation between the safe haven asset class and risk on or equities. One is moving uh, up and the other one's moving down. There's a unique circumstance, which is when the Federal Reserve is doing quantitative easing with low interest rates, that that affects both equities as well as gold and silver uh, with bullish undertones. It increases the market sentiment. But what you're referring to is a little bit different. What tends to happen is if the stock market comes down hard, it has a dramatic sell-off, you would expect gold to go up in light of that. And typically, we might see it go in tandem to the downside. And my belief is, and one explanation, is that traders are liquidating everything they can to pay for the margin calls to hold on to their stocks. In other words, they are in panic mode. And yeah. that's why we might see gold sell off when equities sell off. But historically, they are running in a negative correlation. One moves up, the other moves down. You're right, Gary. I, I, I do want to boing, uh, bring up one notable exception that I've, I've personally observed, which is the run-up in gold prices between um, uh, 2009 to 2011, or when it reached the 2011 uh, previous all-time high. 
And during that period, as you know, stocks also recovered from their, uh, their, their lows in 2009 following the uh, financial crisis. Uh, what happened there? Why did we see a long-term positive correlation over a period of three years? Well, you know, it, the, the correlation is extremely interesting, and I've studied it uh, for many, many years following that the occurrence of that event. Initially, when the financial crisis first emerged, which was around 2008, it wasn't until 2009 that we effectively said, whoa, we've got a financial uh, crisis here and a potential recession. The Federal Reserve stepped in shortly after and began the first ever round of quantitative easing. Now, if quantitative easing means that they swell their balance sheet, they make massive purchases of mortgage-backed securities and treasuries, as well as other assets. When they do that, they devalue the dollar. So if we're pairing gold against the dollar and the dollar goes lower, by virtue, gold has to go up that same amount. And then the only other variable is whether traders are buying or selling it. But here's what was fascinating. Both moved up in tandem. Gold was trading at around 700. It moved up to about 1,000. More quantitative easing came. They continued to move up. But something happened in 2011 in which the bottom fell out of the gold market, but U.S. equities continued to climb. In other words, there was that disconnect. When gold fell in the middle of 2011, equities kept climbing and did so, what, for the next seven or eight years. So it was a unique scenario then. Can we draw, is the current financial crisis similar to that of uh, 2008, 2009? There are some similarities, but there is a key distinction. The similarities are that there, in both occasions, there was massive, massive um, use of monetary tools, not only by the Federal Reserve, but by all the core currencies, whether it's China, Russia, India, Bank of Japan, Bank of England. They were doing whatever they had to do to prop the economy up. They did that then, and they're doing that now. The difference, as far as I'm concerned, is in 2008 and 9, there was an end game. In other words, they knew that the uh, crisis was caused because of bad loans. It was a banking crisis. There was a lot of loans that were subpar that should never have been written. So that it was an issue that they could solve. In other words, they passed the, uh, the Frank Dodds Act, which really tightened credit, really made it so that if you bought a home, you were qualified for it. And that, in essence, solved that issue. Once that issue was solved, it was a period of healing and a period of recuperation and a, and a period of growth once again. Mm -hmm. What's different now is that even if the pandemic were to end tomorrow, they have what multiple companies working on vaccines. There are many that are in their first and second stage and they're proving to have some real potential. Mm -hmm. But let's say, for example, God, God willing, the vaccine was created tomorrow. Everyone was vaccinated the next day. Nobody was sick and everybody was going back to work. That being said, the Federal Reserve could then begin to tighten or lighten up on the accommodative easing, but they've got a big bill. They have allocated close to another $4 trillion, and this time the Treasury Department on the first round of stimulus was $3 trillion. Now they're talking about an additional two. The United States has the largest budget deficit in history. That did not occur in 2008. And in 2008, the issues were extremely visible, transparent, and you could resolve them and then move forward. It's not so clear now. So, Gary, I know you have a bullish case for gold. I'm, I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. Now, what we saw on Tuesday, again, was the largest drop in a year, a single day drop. Uh, for most analysts, this drop has broken their support level. Uh, you know, what we're seeing today on Wednesday could just be a dead cat bounce. And, uh, you know, the trend from a technical perspective, one could argue is really just bearish from here. Uh, macro indicators, bond yields have spiked up, which might have been one of the reasons why gold went down on Tuesday. Uh, how could you still maintain a bullish sentiment given everything else I've just, I've just brought up here? Okay. Well, the first thing we want to take a look at is that serious decline that we had on Friday, I think was needed, well-deserved. And had we not seen that happen, we set up ourselves for the potential of gold just really having an extended um, correction. But 
if you've looked at how it's traded over the last, say, two, three weeks, you've had a succession of higher closes compared to the prior close, higher closes compared to the open with two red candles. A red candle simply means it closes below the open only on two occasions. And the next day it would pop up. These to me are kind of circuit breakers. In other words, gold moved in a nearly parabolic manner to the upside without having uh, a release of the pressure, so to speak, it will come down much harder than what we saw and it will be a longer and more extended correction. I think the sell-off we saw was necessary, it was needed, and it now allows the market to recoup and move to higher pricing. Doesn't mean that it will. And then the second point I wanna raise is that Whereas we're seeing the market possibly move up now after coming down the other day, we could see something like an ABC. Markets don't move straight up or straight down. An ABC simply refers to a correction that has one drawdown, then it moves back higher, and then a final drawdown. We could easily be seeing that. Gary, this, this question came in from a viewer, and uh, the question states, are we going to see a correction in gold in the medium term if we get a vaccine to the coronavirus? Uh, the assumption here is that once we have a vaccine, there would be less risk, less volatility, less fear, and less need for a safe haven asset. What do you think? Well, I mean, the, there is validity in that statement. However, the one caveat to that is that even if a vaccine was created today, the economies globally are in terrible shape. I mean, our GDP contracted 33%, largest contraction in history. Even if everything was the way it was prior to the onset of this pandemic, with the expenditures of the Federal Reserve and the expenditures of the Treasury and global central banks, there would still be repercussions to those actions. And so the fact that if we get a, a vaccine to the pandemic, things will change and we will see a slow and methodical move back to normalcy, whatever that new normal is. But just having the vaccine won't change the facts that the government has spent trillions upon trillions to support the economy. Uh, Gary, as, as we enter into an economic recovery, um, and if I told you that as, uh, as, as consumer demand increases, and as, uh, as uh, the money velocity picks up as a result, uh, you're gonna see inflation as a result. Um, how is that gonna weigh in on your gold prices, uh, long-term gold price forecast? Right, interestingly enough, if you listen to the press conference on July 29th by Chairman Powell, he talked about a disinflationary period followed by an inflationary period because of recent actions of the Fed. Inflation simply means to me, that the dollar has less value. It might have bought me three pieces of bread, and now it buys me two pieces of bread. As such, when you get inflation and the dollar loses value, vis-a-vis -vis the negative correlation between the dollar and gold mean that it will definitely move higher. Okay. Do you see any scenario in the next 12 months that would be bullish for the US dollar? <sighs> that is hard to say. It's possible. However, what we are seeing right now, which is what I have to really react to, is the fact that we have seen uh, the U.S. dollar come off of these highs mid-March at 103, and my technical indicators say it could go as low as 88. It's trading at around 93. So interim and short term, I actually see a higher potential for more downside. The dollar has been king. It has been strong for quite some time, but it is retracing, and I believe that that trend will continue. And the reason being is that the, the central banks here are deflating the dollar more than other central banks are deflating their core currencies. Because really, it's a, uh, a race to zero when it comes to the value of different currencies. Okay, uh, Gary, I want to close on uh, silver because silver, as you know, also dropped like a stone on Tuesday. Uh, would you attribute uh, this drop to the same causes as, uh, as uh, gold's drop? Is it just profit taking for silver as well? Absolutely, absolutely. And there was a line in Blade Runner that said a candle that burns, burns at both ends burns twice as bright for half as long. 
Silver. Is that is that the is that the original Blade Runner or the new one? The original one, and okay. I paraphrased it to say the least. But the point being is that silver has been so dynamic and it's made such a huge leap in turn. It's almost tripled from the lows below twelve dollars in four and a half months. And the fact that it isn't near the record highs is also interesting. But it's going to gain more on the way up, and it seems to have that same effect. It's going to be the leader in percentage drawdowns when we're in corrective mode. Gary, I want to thank you for uh, coming on the show uh, and uh, giving your insights. And um, best of luck this week for trading. Thank you so very much. And I want to wish all of our Kitco viewers the best in trading as well. This is an interesting time to be involved in gold and silver. Thanks again. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lin. Stay tuned for more.